Oh, hello there. Welcome to our discussion on taxation uh, at this point. I'd like to uh, welcome the 81 governors of the provinces all over the Philippines. They may be interested to take a look at uh, what we have here as a discussion of the taxes that a provincial government can derive. I am sure they are very familiar with this topic when they prepare their budgets at uh, this particular sharing is a beautiful uh, way of trying to understand what are the financial resources available to the provinces. But I am uh, Dean Dos Santos Balagtas Pisquera, the uh, uh, Dean of the College of Law and Vice President for Legal Affairs and member of the Board of Trustees, University of Manila. I have a Bachelor of Business Administration in Accounting and a Certified Public Accountant, University of the East Manila, graduating summa cum laude. I have a Master of Business Administration degree from the University of the Philippines, graduating as magna cum laude and valedictorian. And I hold the Bachelor of Laws uh, from the University of the East, cum laude and valedictorian. I worked for more than 36 years with the corporate world, reaching the highest corporate levels in companies like Fuji Xerox, Motorola, Esso, Petron, Glaxo, Smith Klein, Meralco, Delgado Brothers, Furadan, and Permaline. At one time, I was nominated two times as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, and I had uh, more than 30 years as an MBA professor in financial management <clears throat> at the De La Salle University and 10 years with the University of the Philippines. My sharing uh, at this point refers to the local taxation uh, guidelines involving the provinces taken from the uh, local uh, government code. <clears throat> As a matter of starting with our discussion, I have a uh, set of uh, slides in YouTube where I'll be discussing the general principles of local taxation, taxation in the provinces which is covered by this uh, series of YouTube slides. I will have another set of slides about the taxation in municipalities and then I move on to the taxation for cities and the fourth uh, series in YouTube are the taxes for the barangays. There will also be a separate uh, discussion of the real property tax and finally there will be a discussion on the general principles of local taxation in the Philippines. To start the ball rolling, the local taxes available in the Philippines for the provinces include the following. Number one is the transfer tax of real property ownership. Number two is printing and publication business. Third is the franchise tax. Fourth is the tax on sand, gravel, and other quarry resources. Fifth is the professional tax. The sixth is the amusement tax. And the last one is the fixed tax on tracks of certain products. Here 
here are some of the samples of the taxes that are imposed at the provincial level the transfer tax on real property ownership the printing and publication tax the franchise tax uh, that will include franchise holders like GMA and before ABS-CBN the tax on saga, sand, gravel and other quarry products amusement tax on movie houses fixed tax on trucks of certain products and the professional tax these slides will cover the tax on provinces as I mentioned and we already enumerated them with you a while ago to start the ball rolling we now look at the transfer tax of real property ownership this particular tax has to be paid before a new owner can register his property with the deed uh, with the register of deeds of the province where the property is located the tax base uh, is the total consideration or the fair market value of the properties or exchange whichever is higher and the tax has to be paid within 60 days from the date of sale or transfer and the transfer tax rate is 50 percent of one percent the evidence of the transfer tax having been paid will be required by the register of deeds to register the transfer and for the provincial assessor to issue a new tax declaration the evidence of the payment of the transfer tax is needed the notary public uh, who notarize the deed of sale or the deed of donation or the deed of estate settlement shall furnish the provincial assessor of such deed of sale or transfer within 30 days from notarization the second tax by the province is the tax on the printing and publication business here this is imposed upon printers and publishers of books cards posters leaflets handbills certificates receipts pamphlets and others of similar nature the tax rate is of course 50 percent of one percent of the gross receipts of the printer or publisher for the year however exempted from this uh, tax on printing and publication are printing and publishing jobs of school textbooks books references or other reading materials which the department of education culture and sports or dex prescribes the third tax is what is called the franchise tax and it is a tax imposed upon a business enjoying a franchise and the tax base of course is the gross annual receipt of the franchisee during the prior calendar year at the rate of 50 percent of one percent now if there is a new business and therefore there is no prior uh, annual receipt it is the capital investment for this newly started business that becomes the basis of the franchise tax and it is 1 20th of 1 percent of said capital investment that becomes the basis for the franchise tax the next tax by the province is the tax on sand gravel and other quarry resources uh, these resources would be like ordinary stones sand gravel earth and other quarry resources extracted from public lands take note public lands or from the beds of seas lakes rivers streams
stream, creeks, and other public waters in the locality and it will be assessed on the basis of the fair market value per cubic meter in said locality. And the tax rate is 10% of said fair market value per cubic meter. Continuing with the sand, gravel, and other quarry resources, this is shared so that the, there is a distribution of the tax proceeds on the sand, gravel, and other quarry resources where three local government units share. The province gets 30% of the tax. The municipality or city where the sand is extracted gets 30%. And the barangay where the sand is extracted gets 40%. The permit to extract, however, uh, of the sand, gravel, and other quarry resources shall be issued exclusively by the provincial governor pursuant to the ordinance of the Sangunian Panlalawigan. We will understand that the province may be too big, perhaps the barangay captain or even the municipal mayor would know about it and the province would not know. And so in order to put control, no permit shall be issued unless it is signed by the provincial governor and sanctioned by an ordinance by the provincial council of the Sangunian Panlalawigan. Following uh, is the professional tax paid to the provinces. A person who practices his profession one requiring a government examination pays an annual professional tax not to exceed 300 pesos to the province. Every person legally authorized to practice his profession shall pay the professional tax to the province where he practices his profession or where he maintains his principal, principal office in case he practices his profession in several places. So take note, it is the province where he practices profession, not residents practice profession. And if he practices in several places, then it is to, the payment of the professional tax will be at the province where he maintains his principal office. Such professional who pay this professional tax shall be entitled to practice his profession in any part of the Philippines with, without being subjected to any other national or local tax, license, or fee for the practice of such profession. Any person subject to the professional tax shall write in deeds, receipts, prescriptions, reports, books of accounts, plans and designs, surveys and maps, as the case may be, the number of the official receipt to him issued. The professional tax shall be payable annually on or before the 31st day of January. Any person beginning to practice a profession after January must pay the full tax before engagement. A line of profession does not become exempt even if conducted with some other profession for which a tax has been paid. Professionals exclusively employed in the government shall be exempt from the payment of this tax. For instance, my dear friends, I am both a CPA and a lawyer. And so I pay a separate professional tax of 300 for being a CPA and I also pay another 300 for being a practicing lawyer. Any individual or corporation employing a person subject to professional tax shall require payment by that person of the tax on his profession before employment and annually thereafter. The next tax under the provinces is the amusement tax. And the amusement tax would cover the proprietors, 
lessees or operators of theaters, cinemas, concert halls, circuses, boxing stadia, and other places of amusement. And the basis of the tax is this gross receipts from admission fees and is subject to 30%. The uh, proprietors, lessees, or operators of theaters and cinemas shall first deduct the tax, withhold it, and pay it to the provincial treasurer. Then and only then will the gross receipts net of the tax shall be divided between the proprietors, lessees, operators, and the distributors of the cinematographic films. The proceeds of the amusement tax is divided between the province at 50% and the municipality at 50%. There is a need to distinguish what are taxable, taxable amusements such as pop, rock, or similar concerts are subject to tax. But there are certain amusements that are exempt to include operas, concerts, dramas, recitals, painting and art exhibitions, flower shops, musical programs, literary and oratorical presentations. The Sanggunian Panlalawigan may prescribe the time, manner, and terms and conditions for the payment of the amusement tax. For fraud or failure to pay the tax, the Sanggunian Panlalawigan may impose such charges, interest, and penalties as it may deem appropriate. Finally, there is an annual fixed tax on delivery trucks and vans of manufacturers, producers, wholesalers, dealers, or retailers of certain products. A manufacturer, producer, wholesaler, dealer, or retailer is taxed on a truck, van, or any vehicle used to deliver or distribute distilled spirits, fermented liquors, soft drinks, cigars and cigarettes, and other products determined by the Sangguni Anbayan to sales outlets or consumers, whether directly or indirectly within the province. The tax rate is 500 pesos per truck or van per year. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that completes our 